there's a lot of use cases that Cyclone DX um, supports. Um, as an OWASP project, we, we basically came from a security context, which is uh, a little bit different than some of the other formats and kind of their origin stories. But our origin story was really about security. Um, we think security is, is, is a primary concern. It's obviously a, a board level room discussion pretty much all the time. And that's kind of the, um, the expertise that, that we bring to the format. Uh, without that inventory, um, all other forms of analysis become um, become moot. Um, they're not order. So it's really important that you that you understand that that you form that basis of that uh, of that inventory initially. And then once you have that inventory, yes, you can you can perform different types of vulnerability analysis on it. For example, you can do uh, known vulnerabilities with like. FOSA or the NVD or, or you know, some other vendor. Uh, you can do also unknown vulnerabilities because Cyclone DX supports services. So there's, there's a lot of different types of vulnerability analysis that, that you can perform. Many different ways to um, perform integrity verification, both on the bomb itself, uh, which can be uh, independently signed. So we support obviously external signatures but we support uh, internal signatures as well, envelope signatures. Um, so you can verify those. You can verify the um, the integrity of the of the uh, packages themselves with support for hashes and and all kinds of other mechanisms. Um, one of the things, especially for open source, is the number of open source packages that exist. Right, open source is you know software. If software is eating the world, open source is, is eating software, and uh, a lot of that software is is in the form of packages. Um, most of them managed by package managers. And with Cyclone DX, you can you can evaluate those packages because you have enough data to tell you enough information about that package so that you can evaluate it properly. Um, License identification and compliance is, is certainly one of the use cases that we support. We, um, we didn't know a lot about the licensing um, space when we entered, um, when we entered, you know, the first versions of Cyclone DX, uh, which actually did support uh, SPDX license IDs in version one. But then we quickly realized that uh, there's a whole world of licensing uh, outside of SPDX license IDs. Uh, so we support license expressions and commercial licenses and some other stuff as well. So uh, you can certainly use it for license identification and compliance. Um, com software is complex, and you know sometimes uh, components include other things. We 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 call these we call these things assemblies. I like to um, kind of equate it to like a dashboard of an automobile. Or you might have a, a dashboard, and, and within the dashboard, you might have a, an instrument cluster. And within that instrument cluster, you might have a tachometer and a speedometer. And within those, you might have some LEDs and some plexiglass and some capacitors and these types of components. Well, m complex software is, 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 can be kind of like that as well. And with Cyclone DX, you can represent these really complex component assemblies and independently assign, uh, digitally assign each one of those component assemblies. So if you've got parts of these assemblies from different suppliers, each supplier can independently sign their specific portion, which is, which is a really interesting use case. Um, open source is really the ultimate supply chain. And components are renamed, uh, modified, reused, um, distributed like all the time and being able to uh, capture that pedigree all of those uh, relationships in terms of uh, descendants variants and uh, ancestors and what specific modifications that you've made to open source components maybe you've backported security fixes maybe you've added some enhancements uh, for whatever the case is well being able to describe all of this data is uh, is something that Cyclone DX has supported for many years. So we call this pedigree, uh, which is kind of the DNA of of, of, of component modifications and, and identity. We also support component provenance, which is the concept of where you retrieve something from. 
whether it's from a, an open source package repository, from a commercial supplier and that whole chain of custody there. So that's really important. Like who you got something from uh, is something that, that we also support. Um, well, you know, services, uh, you know, software is certainly, um, you know, eating the world. <laughs> um, software does not live in a bubble and it hasn't for the last two decades, right? Modern software relies upon things on the internet or things within its environment that it's operating in. Um, the fact that I'm using Bright Talk right now to communicate with you is fact that I'm relying upon external services to, to do what I need to do. Um, whether you are describing, you know, services to get Google map information or, or stock quotes or trying to control nuclear launch codes, right? Something, your software relies upon a service to be able to do something. And services are a really important part of your, your software's inventory. And again, Cyclone DX has supported this, uh, this type of inventory for multiple years, um, including like the data classifications, the directional flow of data, who the providers are, um, all kinds of stuff about the services are, are captured. Um, and finally, and certainly not least, uh, you know, dependency relationships, right? Components depending on other components, components depending on services, services depending on other services. Um, so all of those complex relationships can be, um, can be captured as well as all kinds of other types of relationships as well.